This is the Laughlin Town Advisory Board, Laughlin Regional Government Center 101 Civic Way, Laughlin, Nevada 89029. Today is November 14th, 2023 at 1.30. We'll get some um, items cleaned up here first. Items on the agenda may be taken out of order. The board may combine two or more agenda items for consideration. The board may remove an item from the agenda or delay discussion relating to an item at any time. No action may be taken on any matter not listed on the posted agenda. All planning and zoning matters heard at this meeting are forwarded to the Board of County Commissioners, Zoning Commission, BCC, or the Clark County Planning Commission, PC, for final action. Please turn off or mute all cell phones and other electronic devices. Please take all private conversations outside the room. With a 48-hour advance request, a sign language interpreter, or other reasonable efforts to assist and accommodate persons with physical disabilities may be made available by calling 702-455-3530, TDD at 702-385-7486, or Relay Nevada toll free at 800-326-6868 TD backslash TDD. Supporting material provided to the board members for this meeting may be requested from Tammy Harris at 702-298-0828. Supporting material is or will be available at the Clark County Department of Administrative Services 500 South Grand Central Parkway, 64 Las Vegas, Nevada, 89155. Supporting material is or will be available at the Clark County website, clarkcountynevada.gov backslash Laughlin TAB. On now call roll call, Herman Walker. Here. Kathy Oaks is absent, Fred Doten. Here. Pamela Walker here, no relation and Kathleen Haas is absent. Our secretary, Tammy Harris, 702-298-0828, or Tammy.Harris at ClarkCountyNevada.gov. Business address, Clark County Department of Administrative Services, 500 South Grand Central Parkway, 6th floor, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89155. Our county liaison, Mark Moskowitz, 702-298-0828 or 702-455-6173, mark.moskowitz at clarkcountynevada.gov. Business address, Clark County Department of Administrative Services, 500 South Grand Central Parkway, 6th floor, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89155. I now call the meeting to order, and if Fred, would you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. This is the time for public comment. This is a period devoted to comments by the general public about items on this agenda. No discussion, action, or vote may be taken on the agenda item. You will be afforded the opportunity to speak on individual public hearing items at the time they are presented. If you wish to speak to the board about items within its jurisdiction, but not appearing on this agenda, you must wait until the comments by the general public period listed at the end of this agenda. Comments will be limited to three minutes. Please step up to the speaker's podium. If applicable, clearly state your name and address and please spell your last name for the record. If any member of the board wishes to extend the length of a presentation, this will be done by the chairperson or the board council by majority vote. 
seeing as no one, I'm going to combine item three and four for approval of the minutes for October 10th, 2023, and today's agenda, November 14th, 2023. So move. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, that passes. We'll now receive a report and updates from the South County Liaison, Mark Moskowitz, regarding updates on the grand celebration, yacht party, trunk or treat, coffee with a cop, community achievement awards, Veterans Day breakfast, and Commissioner Naft and Nevada Treasurer Connie remembering Don Laughlin and any other updates from Clark County. Perfect, thank you. We, we had a very busy month and started this month. So I have a quick presentation I'll show if we can bring that up. So um, first thing I wanna say, uh, thank you to the chamber. It was a great opportunity to go on the new Grand Celebration yacht. Um, if you have a chance, check it out. It's very nice. Um, there was a lot of members of the community there. We had a really great time. So I was able to sit with our Laughlin Citizen of the Year last year, Margaret Gavilon. So a little reminder, remember our nominations are gonna open up. So that was a good time to do that. The next slide, um, this was the trunk or treat at uh, the Mountain View Park. It was very windy, but uh, we had a great turnout. Uh, thank you, Renee Yepes, for inviting me to that and Elon Bill Ray as well for setting up. It was a wonderful turnout. We handed out tons of candy um, and I had such a blast, so thank you. The next slide is Coffee of the Cop. I always wanna thank Metro for inviting me to those. Um, I have an opportunity to work with our partners with Metro to talk about what's going on in the community. Um, a lot of times we can answer questions together. So I always encourage everyone to go to those because the answers that they have, I don't have, and what I have, they don't have sometimes. So we're really able to collaborate well together. So thank you as well for that. Um, the next slide. I want to thank uh, Jackie of the Chamber. I was able to uh, present the Spirit of Nevada Award at the Community Achievement Awards. Um, it's a, such a wonderful event and opportunity to really highlight so many great people in the tri-state area. So um, Kent Divich was the one who won the Spirit of Nevada uh, Award, so it was a great time. And uh, congratulations, Fred, as well, for being nominated for several awards. So, yeah. And then the next slide. Um, on Friday, uh, November 10th, Commissioner Naft, as well as uh, Nevada State Treasurer Zach Conine, uh, with the help of Pam Walker, we were able to set up a wonderful Veterans Day breakfast. Um, it was a, such a great event to thank our veterans for all they do in the community and thank our local veterans. Um, we had about 40 people there with a wonderful breakfast and chatting and laughing and all that. So here's a quick picture, and then if you go to the next slide, I just have to thank Pam so much. She was integral in helping us get it set up and get everything organized. So thank you as always for all your help with that. Um, the next slide is um, also on that day, we, Commissioner Naff, myself, and uh, Zach Conine attended Don Laughlin's funeral. Uh, Father Charlie did a really great job of kind of bringing the whole community together. It was a very moving ceremony. I saw a lot of familiar faces there. Um, it, it, was, it, it was great to hear so many stories and meet with so many people. So he will definitely be missed and has definitely put his stamp on this community. And um, I, you know, it was great to just see everyone and, and send my thoughts and prayers to the Laughlin family and all that. So um, if you go to the next slide. Also, um, Commissioner Naff to myself and um, Principal Estes was able to give us a tour of the construction that's going on at the elementary school. And wow, I can tell you they are moving along very quickly. Um, she gave us a very thorough tour, as you can see in this picture. And then if you wanna go to the next slide, um, we took a picture outside, I mean, walls are already up. They are really moving along. So it looks really great. Um, they're able to update a lot of areas as well through it. So um, I'm very excited to see this view. Be an addition to our community, um, I want to just thank Principal Estes for always helping out and giving us so much information. So um, if you go to the next slide, uh, we were also able to stop at the Riverside and kind of meet with some of the business owners or the property owners, talk to them about the river, um, any issues or questions, kind of the river walk. I know that's a very utilized area now that's getting cooler, so we were able to walk that. And then if you go to the next slide, we met with some staff members. And then the last slide, um, the whole team was able to kind of meet with us and talk to us. So that was really cool to meet a lot of the employees and staff. So, and you can end the slideshow there. And then, um, so we, as I said, we had a lot of events going on. Um, 
really great things. I know the road project is starting to wrap up. That's phase one. So that was areas one, two, and three. Phase two, which is going to be areas four and five, and is the rest of the roads that weren't included that aren't um, private or HOA. It's most likely it's going to be El Mirage and James A. Bilbray. Those will be the big ones in phase two. That uh, has gone out to bid. So what that means is that now it has all the contracts that have an opportunity to create a bid package, submit that. So that takes a few months to kind of get that together. Then they have to score all the bids. And then once that happens, then they're able to award the contract. So potentially middle of 2024 to be safe, but um, that's moving along. So I know the phase one is looking wonderful. We were able to drive through a lot of the roads. Um, thank you to the residents and the community for working with the contractors and all that to make sure everything went smoothly. Um, please let us know if you see anything or if something seems off of what's been finished because we always have the opportunity to go back out there and look at it. So we'd hate to have that end and then a warranty period end and we're not able to fix it. So just keep your eyes out. Everything is looking good. We sit on meetings, I want to say every two weeks to go over stuff. So anything you have an issue, please contact our office. That's an opportunity Tammy and I can bring that up to the contractor and let them know. Um, and then my last update is we have Commissioner Naff's newsletter in the back, as always. Lots of good information. Um, if you'd like an electronic copy, please let us, our office know. And with that, those are all my updates. So thank you. Thank you. I'm sure you're aware that the uh, Southern Nevada uh, Clark County Water Authority has received a money windfall, uh, the amount of which is considerable. Has this been taken up by the county commissioners? I would say I want to wait till the water district could speak on that, but I can let you know that we're working with Big Bend Water District hand in hand to find out any opportunities for funding or opportunities that are available um, and to see the money that's going. Like you mentioned, I don't have any update on your specific point, unfortunately, but I can look into that as well. Well, I think a message, at least from this board, sure should be given to the Board of County Commissioners that the commissioners capture that fund until it has been fully discussed and decide how it's going to be dispensed. First of all, I think that a substantial portion, if not all of it, should be appropriated to rectify the problem that the Water Authority has created for the town of Laughlin. That's number one. Number two, I have absolutely no faith or trust in the Water Authority. If they have that money and it's in their treasury, they'll get it spent. And I think that money should be captured and that the Laughlin people should have an opportunity to visit with the Board of County Commissioners as well as the Water Authority sure. to discuss the disposition of those funds. Yep. I, I can take that information and share that with... I would like to have you pass that on to Commissioner Neff okay. and, uh, and see that it's passed on to the remainder of the Board of County Commissioners. I will do that. Thank you. All right, receive a report from Lieutenant Rogers with Metro Police regarding activity and statistics during the past month and other area crime concerns. I'm sorry. <laughs> Can you all hear me? <laughs> um, so, um, whoa, that's really loud now. Um, for uh, battery domestics, we had three adult arrests. We had one juvenile arrest. 
bookings, we had 21 adult arrests and one booking, no juvenile citations. We had one call for service at Laughlin High School and Bennett Elementary School. Um, and crime, I mean, calls for service are down at all the uh, casinos with the exception of increase at Edgewater and Riverside staying the same. And residential calls for service remain, uh, we saw a reduction with the exception of the Vistas that had a two increase of two calls. Any questions for me? Any questions? No. No. Thank you for your Thank time. You. Have a good day. Clark County Fire Department, but I do not see anybody here. Jason Bailey with Big Ben Water regarding the status of the water system. Good afternoon, Jason Bailey, Big Ben Water District. Uh, I'd like to give a monthly report and then I'll uh, try to uh, answer Mr. Walker's question. Um, as you can see on the report in terms of water use, um, for the month of October, there were 276 acre feet used. Uh, total diversions for this year are 2,564. Really close with what we used last year, really in line with the water use from the previous year. Uh, system update, we're, we're continuing to upgrade our SCADA system, which is kind of the control center for the treatment plant and the distribution uh, center. This will provide greater system reliability uh, within our, our system and that those uh, upgrades should be completed uh, very soon. Uh, as far as a financial update, uh, the operating surplus of 186,000, that's from the end of fiscal year 23 but with, with uh, accumulated debt and capital expenditures, um, the, the debt increased 300,000 since the end of the fiscal year. And I did send uh, to the board um, just last week in the board meeting, the board of trustees approved the annual financial report for the Big Bend Water District. And so I did send uh, all the board members via email uh, a link to that uh, report, which is also can be found on the Big Bend Water District website. And then finally, uh, as far as the storage project, um, we are continuing to seek external funding um, sources. We've spoken with USDA, their rural partnership, and we're also looking into if there are, to see if there are any additional ARPA funds that maybe haven't been used, uh, ones that are outside of the water and wastewater infrastructure funds. So the state of Nevada was given ARPA funding and then a certain pot was used for water and wastewater of that we didn't receive uh, but we're going to look and see if there's a, a way to access uh, additional dollars that way. So we're continuing to look at external sources there and then as far as Mr. Walker if I can just get some more information I'd be happy to get back with you on a windfall of money I think is what you said just want to understand what that is and and so I can I can better address your question. So if you, do you have more information on, on what that source is from? I only heard a news release. And uh, I don't have a lot of faith in how news is broadcast, but this okay. is what I heard. Okay. That a fund was received by Clark County to be dis divided between two agencies, one of which was the Water Authority. It was a substantial sum of money. I can't tell you the amount because I was driving, I was in the, <laughs> in the car, and obviously I, I couldn't take notes or anything like that. So, uh, what I am saying is that I think that the, that, uh, our commissioner, our liaison, and the balance of the Board of County Commissioners need to look into this because as you're aware, Big Bend had substantial resources when the district decided to take it over. Those resources evaporated. There was also a, a, a projection for construction of 
uh, of another retention reservoir, uh, a tank, that was removed by the Water Authority once they took over. If we had that tank, which was proposed to be put in place, we wouldn't be confronted with the, quote, moratorium imposed by the Water Authority on building permits for the township of Lockley. Uh, I, I, I find the use of the language somewhat despicable because when they came down to talk to us about that, they said, this isn't a fixed deal, it's not a closed environment for permits. It's just a moratorium. Well, as far as I'm concerned, that's just playing with words. What's the difference between what was done and a moratorium and a shutdown on the issuance of permits? It's one and the same. Uh, I don't care what kind of language you employ uh, to describe the action of the uh, unit that you're a part of, uh, but I think that it's phony. And as I said before, I, I have a great distrust for what is being done at, at the upper echelon uh, with regard to the water authority. And I think that the commissioners need to take a very, very insightful view of the activity of the Water Authority, and, uh, and particularly uh, look into the disposition that is intended to be made of the amount of money that they have received or are about to receive. Okay. That's, I, that's I appreciate that clarification on those funds. I'll, I'll work with Mark. Uh, if those are county funds, I'm, I'm not sure. I, I haven't been informed of, of those funds yet, so I'll look into uh, work with Mark to see what county funds those are. And then as far as just in response to, to money that's been used, so in, in 2017 there was a capital uh, improvements plan that was approved uh, of $9 million. And so a lot of those, those funds have been used to improve the system, and that's a 10-year uh, program, so we're still kind of within that time frame. Uh, and so that's, that's a place where you had mentioned a lot of the funds had gone is to pay for a lot of those improvements to the system, um, which I talked about some of the things, the SCADA upgrades and other things. The impression I gathered from the release I listened to was that this was a federal fund appropriated uh, to Clark County to be divided between two agencies that are under the jurisdiction of the Board of County Commissioners okay. in Clark County. Now, you know, that's my source. Okay, we'll look into that and I'll work with the county to see what, what that's about. Thank you, appreciate that. And, and whatever more tangible direct information you're able to obtain, if it could be shared with, with the board, I would appreciate it. Sure, that. any information I get, I'll share with the board. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I got more questions. Thank you. All right, thank you. See this report from Jason Bailey. Big Ben watered it. I don't see him. <laughs> I don't see Will Smith either. Mike Jackson, Executive Director with Southern Nevada Transit Coalition. Good afternoon, Mike Jackson, Executive Director, Southern Nevada Transit Coalition. Uh, wanted to go over the report, starting with ridership. Ridership is staying steady is in regards to fixed drought, paratransit with slight increases in express routes. General updates, we're still shorthanded in our staffing levels. We're continuing to do our best to drive our salary rates up 
benefit better benefit package and be more attractive to the workforce um, three years ago we were at about thirteen dollars an hour we're now up to sixteen dollars an hour so I continue to do my best to work with the budget and my biggest thing with the management team is, is we need to save in other areas so we can give more to the employees so we continue to do so and uh, we're not going to stop I'm still not happy with where we're at but I have to work within our budget for many years we had no retirement plan we now have a retirement plan we have paid time off um, this year was the first year that the employee contributions went down for their health care insurance. So a lot of positives, a lot of positives. So we're getting there, but the problem is, is CDL drivers is, is beginning to be very difficult. DOT has increased the amount of training hours and all these different things to get your CDL. So it's just, it's just made it difficult, but we're getting through it. Hired another person today, didn't we? Yep. So we're, we're getting there. 5339 grants. Um, I was having some struggles with all the increasing in supply costs, vehicle costs, and when we put in for our grant three years ago and even gave it a percentage increase, expecting inflation, but no one expected this much inflation. When the vehicle bid was done and the costs were finally given, it was more than the amount that I was awarded. So I went ahead and took a look at the specifications and started cutting things. I cut camera systems, I cut paint jobs, I've cut all these different things that in, in a sense are somewhat padded because we can do it ourselves. So I removed all those options, got it down under the amount, and we're going to be able to order two vehicles for Laughlin, one CEL bus, one non-CEL bus. That would be one for paratransit and one for uh, our Vegas Express. These buses are a different type of bus than what you're used to seeing. They're a low floor cutaway, which means that there's no steps getting in the bus and no lift that goes out. It's simply a ramp much safer and a lot easier to board and and my drive for that is of course to lower our insurance costs <coughs> so when we do get the buses we will do the paint job ourselves as we normally do um, we'll get the camera system we'll install the camera systems we'll install the head signs all these different things and uh, we'll handle that through a different grant a lot of community partnerships um, as mentioned in the last report about SNTC bringing back the toy drive, uh, we're full steam ahead with this. Uh, we stopped doing it about 15 years ago and it was quite successful back then. Uh, we now brought it back and we've named it after my daughter who passed away last year. And uh, we have a trash can in the back. Um, it's just a little display that the kids at the schools in the, in the, in the area had painted up and we got them placed all over the community and we're collecting toys for this toy drive. We've partnered up with Jeff Jackson in Bullhead City, Mike Cruz at the church, and rather than duplicate efforts, we've combined efforts. So we're all working together on this and we're gonna get a lot of presents to a lot of kids in Laughlin and Searchlight. Um, the numbers looks like we can cover everybody and we're looking at five presents per kid on the area that we're giving out we're gonna have a bus set up at our yard we can provide free transportations to those who are coming for the event um, the kids will come in our main entrance and go through a gate to our bus that will be decorated for Christmas Santa Claus will be inside with elf assisting and the kids will go see Santa Claus and get their gifts. So it's kind of similar to what we did when we were down at the jail, and uh, it was a very good success. So we look forward to pulling this off. Unfortunately, I'll be out of town when that happens, and Steve Bishop has been tasked with it, and she's rolling with it. She is doing fantastic with it. 
<laughs> so you can see in the in the report the the different uh, skins that we have set out. Mike, before you move on, have you thought about partnering with some of the other organizations that do something similar to this? Yes, we're. This is our first year back, and it's been a busy time for for us with all our other projects. We will fine tune this, but Jeff Jackson over in Bullhead, they have the big toy, shall we call it toy store, their warehouse over at the fire department. And so everything is being gathered and collected and taken over there. And then it's all categorized into the, the age groups. And then we basically go through and shop for each kid and we get five presents per kid. So it is a combined effort. I know there's a few other people doing it, but we got with as many people as we could to not duplicate efforts and not compete. We want to take care of all the kids. Is the Poles and the Elks both do the, they do the feed a family at Christmas time. Yeah, that I heard it was food. Gifts. I didn't know it was any presents. So we do the food and, and the gifts at Christmas, so we may want to combine those as well, um, those funds with that. Um, okay. So if you would like for me to talk to those organizations and maybe we can co all combine to work together with that. We're not duplicating. Hi, Sue Bishop from Nevada Transit. Um, we have spoke with like Renee with the church and with the school to organize to make sure like the Elks is taking on a certain amount of children. Uh, Shop of the Cop is taking on a certain amount. Right. The church is taking on a certain amount. We have been told we have no limit on how many we're going to take. So everybody takes theirs, and we're trying to get the remainder. And it looks like we're pretty close to getting all of the elementary school covered. Okay. Um, the other part of our program. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I love this stuff. The other part of the program is our teenagers are being missed. Mm -hmm. So out on each and one of my TMs that are placed out throughout the town and with other help from our realtors and stuff with do cash donations, we're gonna get, try to help, start off with our searchlight kids because they've really been missed on our teenager side. Get them like a $100 gift card type of thing. Take them shopping so that they have that ability to get something too. So we are looking to work with whoever wants to work with us, join in on us. Renee's been helping me a lot. Like you said, this is our first year back. This is my first year doing it at all. So wherever we can get help and wherever we want to try to group together, then we're all willing. Okay. So, so if you want to get with us and, and see what kind of combined efforts we can do, let's do so because this is going to be good and it's only going to get better. You're right. So and the teenagers are always the most difficult. Yes. They really are. And so, you know, we're hitting searchlight. We're hitting everywhere. So it's, it's a really good thing. It was my wife's idea to bring it back. So we've done a lot of participation, a lot of different events throughout. Um, oh wait, holiday. So wanted to put out there that we're offering free rides on Thanksgiving, Christmas. I changed up New Year's and New Year's Day a little bit. It was a little confusing before. Uh, there was some times that free rides weren't allowed until midnight or they were allowed at 6 p.m. My whole thing for this free rides and holidays is to have people off the road, have people that may be potentially drinking, take the bus. And so New Year's and New Year's Eve, both, is an area that should be, the bus should be taken. So I've added the complete day of New Year's Eve to our list of free ride days. So press releases have gone out on that. Here's another big one. Reduce fare policy. In ef efforts to increase ridership and to assist those who need in the community, I found a way through t Title VI changes, federal changes in Title VI policies, that I can give reduced fares to low income. So I'm going through the process and getting it approved through NDOT and we are going to, we'll do a press release on it and put flyers out to where we're gonna be able to offer 
reduce fare to those who qualify for low income and it'll be very easy, not very painful, more so an honor system application to make this happen. Because like, I don't know that I remember any mention, it's not about the money that we get in the fare box, it's about the rides we get on the buses. So we're gonna do our part. We do know that in paratransit, there's a lot of people with fixed incomes and the fares, they're not riding as often as they'd like because of the fares. And that's not good. If they need to ride the bus, they need to ride the bus. So we're, we're really gonna step up to the plate and come up with a good reduce, reduced fare policy to be able to help everybody out. Events and outreach. So we had a lot of outreach and events. One of the events that we had was our Silver Rider Employee Appreciation Picnic and Bus Rodeo. It was our third annual. It was quite a success. Uh, we had a lot of uh, community leaders there. Several of them drove the 40-foot bus. I rode along. I got scared. And <laughs> we had a good time. <laughs> But it was a great event. Uh, we know we have a lot of sponsorship assistance. We have bus manufacturers. We have our insurance company. Um, different divisions in the competition, but the four different divisions and first prize of every division gets 300, second prize gets 200, and third prize gets 100. And that's all sponsorship money that we get from our new flyer bus, our box bus, Creative Bus, RO Bus, you know, Allison Transmission, Craig and Pike Insurance. Then, then the casinos, all the casinos stepped up to the plate this year. They gave us all kinds of goodies for a raffle. And, and I mean, it was just really, really good and really uh, community minded. And it was a great event. It's not open to the public. It's meant to be employee appreciations, but I liked all of our partners and stakeholders to part partake so hopefully maybe next year you guys might be able to attend I am looking at inviting the state to attend our next year the, I should say all the grantees in the state I want all the rural transportations in the state to have an opportunity to attend a bus rodeo and so I'm working with NDOT and making this happen and NDOT has always been a big fan of this event that we do every year although they haven't attended because they work Monday through Friday and it's on the weekend, but they really wanna come. So I'll keep you posted on how that works out for our next year event. Who per participated in the health fair at the Aquarius as well as the National Night Out. Um, we continue to show our support utilizing buses for our very successful concerts with crowd control Sue Bishop uh, did it again this year with her uh, decorated 40-foot haunted bus in which she had set up in both Laughlin and Searchlight events. And that was another good success. And then another thing that I, I think was important to bring up that I hadn't brought up before is, is uh, Sue's participation with FEMA. Um, I think this really got going back in the days when we had some flooding and our water contamination and we had to have bottles of water everywhere and uh, FEMA's gotten involved and now uh, Sue with a lot of, she's, she's always been part of our safety and, and security for SNTC and she's received a lot of good training. She's now playing a pretty key role in our uh, community emergency response team and she's the coordinator here in Laughlin as well as a trainer and she just recently trained well, trained in the Overton, Logandale, Searchlight, Marapa Valley. So she's, she's taking care of all the rural areas and assisting them as well. But I think it's a good feather in our cap that we're doing our part and helping out the community in that, that way too. That's all I got. Any questions? Okay. Thank you. Yep. Parks and 
recreation. See the report from Kelly Ware, Southern Clark County Coordinator for the QNR extension regarding the status of programs and upcoming activities. Hi there. Hi. I was here last month. My name's Kelly Lair. I'm the new University of Nevada Reno Extension Program Coordinator for Southern Clark County. Uh, these programs offered from UNR are in response to research-based knowledge to address critical community needs. It's a county, state, and federal partnership that provides practical education to people, businesses, and communities in any area of community development. This includes children, youth, and families, which most commonly you hear 4-H, health and nutrition, agriculture, horticulture, and natural resources. Because UNR is a land-grant university and there's only one in each state, um, these programs are available to all in Nevada. And I've been positioned here because Southern Nevada, Laughlin, and Searchlight are one of the most underserved areas in Nevada. These programs are fantastic. They focus on sustainability, renewable energy, agriculture, forestry, gardening, math, science, art, robotics, overall health and creating a better community. I'm a former educator. I'm licensed in California and the state of Nevada. I taught physical education and health for over 20 years. I was a high school and junior high uh, volleyball and basketball coach. I had no idea about these resources. If I would have known, I would have used them. The best part, the best news, is that they're completely free. UNR Extension has a statewide presence in 4-H children's programming. It's been around for decades. It's a STEAM pathway program. I know people ask me, STEAM, do you mean STEM? They've added art into that. They focus on life goals such as strategic thinking, collaboration, mentoring, civic engagement, networking, and general healthy life habits and skills. The children pledge the four H's, a head to clearer thinking, their heart to greater loyalty, their hands for larger service, and their health to better living for their club, community, country, and their world. The participants learn everything from citizenship, leadership, team building, self-esteem, healthy habits, and studies have shown they're more likely to advocate for inclusion, participate in community events, provide community outreach, and have career goals as adults. We do have some 4-H members in the adult community around that praise that we're back here in town. The club's motto is making the best better, and the slogan is learn by doing. And all of the programming is very tactile. All hands-on tasks and activities are supplemental to the school curriculum that's provided and they encourage collaboration with others along their journey for the teamwork building. 4-H exists to find out what sparks each child. It's gonna be different for everybody. We strive to provide also adult champions to serve as mentors and give them as many opportunities to engage in what they're passionate about as possible. And they might not find out what they're passionate about until we present them with something that they've never been presented before. UNR Extension does exist and prosper from a community of volunteers, however. Leadership participation from business owners, parents, lobbyists, hobbyists, entrepreneurs, and educators alike are what make it a success. Presently, I represent the program all by myself. I'm currently running a coding and robotics club before school at Bennett Elementary School. We do it on Thursday mornings. I've coordinated with Vanessa at the Boys and Girls Club to begin 4-H with junior high school members so they can experience STEAM activities that maybe they've never been introduced to before. And lastly, I'm designing a career readiness program for the eighth graders at the middle school called Career Edge, which after speaking with Principal Estes, we'd like to implement that into the eighth grade health class starting in January. I also serve as the liaison between UNR and the Master Gardener program here in Laughlin. The garden is at the community center and where the Boy and girls, Boys and Girls Club is located. I'd love to meet with any and all of you and insert myself into this community I've tried to introduce myself at National Night Out, Trunk Retreat, Community Achievement Awards, and the Town Advisory Board meetings from last month. If you're interested in donating time, teaching a skill or a hobby, or donating any amount of funds towards a program, or if you just simply have questions, I'm available Tuesdays through Thursday right next door at 55 Civic Way. I share the apron with the fire department there. That's the back door to my office. Um, I do have business cards with me today, too, should you need my contact information, and I'm, I'm just looking forward to serving the community. Do you have any questions for me? Do you still have the uh, 
So the radon test kits are gonna be coming out in January. They're gonna put out the newsletter in, in January and I let um, Jim know at the front desk there at the office because they'll come in and they'll be looking for them. And so I'll get a box of those radon kits for both Searchlight and, and Laughlin. It, Yes, I'll have those available, and I do have some literature that goes with it also. Anybody else? Keep up the good work. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, receive a report from Jack DeWallen with Laughlin Chamber of Commerce regarding current and upcoming business activities in Laughlin, and she'll combine with the Laughlin Tourism Commission regarding current and upcoming events and activities. Good afternoon, board. Even you, Mark. How are you doing? Um, it's pretty simple this time of year, so I'll, it's kind of brief. We are going to have a ribbon cutting and groundbreaking, um, re grand opening for Drifting Bistro, who is now partnered with Hooked on Pokey um, in Fort Mojave. That will be coming up pretty soon. Um, you can look forward to our Christmas jingle mingle at the Aquarius, and that is a fundraiser for the Feed a Family program. And that's December 14th on the Aquarius uh, property. We have our speaker for this Friday, and it's Elon Bilbray from Clark County Parks and Recreation Department to show off the parks and the different activities that happen in the parks annually. Um, as you heard, Laughlin, the um, Laughlin Chamber presented the Community Achievement Awards, and we had 106 nominations, 520 were in attendance, and American Legion Post 60 was our premier sponsor. It was a lovely night and we have a lot of participation. Thank you, Mark. Um, um, even from uh, Jackie Rosen's office this year. So it was really a nice evening um, and unfortunately it was my last. So when my replacement comes in, I'll try and train them on the standards we're accustomed to. <laughs> the Connie Davis 5K walk and roll is March 2nd. They're taking early registrations to the end of the year. It does increase after the first of the year, so get your registration in. Um, the Laughlin Labyrinth's maintenance program, the first meeting is at the end of this month, and we'll be um, getting in contact with all the different organizations, churches, schools, um, civic um, clubs inside the schools with our students to come out and spend a day um, one time a month. There's 12 months to fill in to make sure that weeds are pulled and make sure the rocks are placed back where somebody may have vandalized it or kicked them out of the way. Um, and we'll all get a nice training on how that's happening and put a little newsletter together. It's one of our most sought um, points of interest here in the town of Laughlin and we wanna make sure that it's maintained now that Wes has left the town. Our membership is up to 307, Laughlin percentage is 31%. Volunteers and partnership, um, they have they always have um, openings for new members. We're trying to get a younger member now that our more mature volunteers in partnership are aging um, out of the system and they um, can't do as much physical work or stand for long periods of time. They have a lot of work that they're still very, very good at, especially organizing and sitting and taking tickets and scanning and those kind of things. Um, but we are looking for some younger people, um, especially maybe some teen volunteers um, if they want to participate, that's how we do Community Achievement Awards. We bring in the Interact students and they do a most amazing job at Community Achievement Awards and working with the senior volunteers and learning how to be of service in their community with um, good ethic, so we like that. Volunteers in partnership are looking forward to the snow or off-road races. Uh, Laughlin Bullhead Air Show in April that is when we're gonna have a STEM pro, um, show at the beginning. Christmas Jingle Mingle, of course, I said on December 14th and the Connie Davis 5K Walk and Roll, March 2nd. We do not have any concerts um, scheduled with the LTC. I'll go over that in a minute. So there aren't any um, concerts for us to have volunteers at at this point. As of last night, we celebrated the volunteers in partnership post COVID. We were finally allowed to um, now that we've been out of COVID for more than a year, we were able to have a party on the grand celebration. We packed it with all volunteers that put in more than 30 hours uh, and 
and 10, 30 hours a year and 10 hour or 10 meetings over two years. And we had to kind of combine it because we kind of left them out last year. But um, Golden Entertainment, because they used 21 of um, the volunteers to scan tickets and usher people to their seats at LEC and the Laughlin, uh, the Las Vegas Convention and Visitors Authority um, uses them for our visitor center. So they both combined in their efforts to sponsor the event and we had over 85 people on the boat and it was really, really nice. They were, um, they were really celebrated with a lot of wonderful gifts, some comp meals, all 85 of them for a resort and a lot of wonderful gifts and it was a really nice celebration. I'm sure you'll hear about it on the street. It's gonna, I think Jill's doing a story about it too so you can see all the highlights. Um, I did talk to NDOT and we were both um, feeling kind of yucky about the whole thing with the bridge not being named the Laughlin Bridge before Mr. Laughlin passed away. Um, I have personally been working on it for three years. Um, much to my dismay, it did not get done before his passing, but we're not deterred and um, Casey at NDOT has put it at the top of his priority list to make sure that the family can participate in the dedication of that bridge um, really soon. I don't think I'm gonna let this one go for very long. I'm getting kind of impatient. We've already waited too long and I'm kind of disappointed in the whole project. I wanna remind you that um, notary services for members are free. We are a registered agent of the Nevada Division of Wildlife. We do host the visitor center and we do have a business center where any traveler or local business can come in, even if you're not a member, and you can come in and get your business stuff done, checking your emails and those kind of things, and we'll guide you in the right direction for any other needs that you need. Um, I think that's it for Laughlin Chamber. I'll move on to the Laughlin Tourism Commission. The Laughlin Bullhead Air Show is in full swing and planning. Our first large general committee meeting is coming up, um, and that will be in the paper for anyone who wants to participate. Um, anyone that's interested in volunteering for the air show, because it does take about 250 volunteers to pull it off. It's a lot of work, and we're gonna have to have some very mature volunteers for especially the day before on the STEM day, where we're gonna have lots of exhibits and speakers for that day, including a, um, a box lunch for the children or the students who attend. Um, while we're on the airport for just a second, I want to tell you that as of today, we have 52 reservations uh, cemented and, and signed for F1 diversion flights to come from Las Vegas. They don't have enough room for private and commercial airlines, so we have them coming right here. Um, some of them have, uh, have acquired their own transportation to and from. Some of them are gonna drop off their passengers there and then the crew will just come here and then play in Laughlin and then be able to talk about it all the way back home so that we wanna show them the best hospitality that Laughlin can provide and show them the extra amenities that we have that places like Las Vegas and Lake Havasu can't um, help them with, um, including our waters and our mountains. So that's really cool. We're, we can hold up to 84 tie downs at our airport and we're looking forward to getting more. Everybody is aware and now they're starting to call in. Rockets Over the River will again be on July 4th. Message to the Stars will also um, be provided to our Tri-State residents with the opportunity to send messages up to their loved ones on a cannon. I do this personally every year and affix their messages to the cannons and then tell them exactly what minute, what second, and what the description of, of their um, rocket looks like so that they can stand outside and look and see when their message goes to the Stars. Um, that's about it. Townwide concerts will be released as soon as I can. We have five annually between Ju June, July 1st and June 30th on our fiscal budget. Do you have any questions? Thank you. Thank you. We see the report, our cannons are not here, the library. I don't see Don Esty. Announcements of upcoming neighborhood meetings and county or community meetings and events. None. Okay, 
Announcement. Laughlin Town Advisory Board will begin accepting nominations for the 2024 Laughlin Citizen of the Year on November 14, 2023. 23, excuse me. And nominations will close on December 29th, 2023. And the nomination forms are back there on the back of the table. Um, they're also available <clears throat> at the Laughlin Library, the Community Resource Center, Spirit Mountain Activity Center, and the Laughlin Administrative Office, or at the Clark County website, clarkcountynevada.gov backslash Laughlin PAD. Nomination forms must be turned into the Laughlin Administrative Office, Laughlin Regional Government Center, 101 Civic Way, Laughlin, Nevada, 89029, by December 29th, 2023, at 5 p.m. Only nominations utilizing the nomination form will be accepted. The Laughlin Citizen of the Year Award <coughs> is given annually in honor of the late Jim Edwards and is intended to recognize and thank the outstanding citizen of Laughlin who has given his or her private time and effort to help local government make Laughlin a better place to live. It is expected that the 2024 Citizen of the Year recipient will be announced and honored at the Tuesday, February 13th, 2024 meeting of the Laughlin Town Advisory Board at 1.30. There are no planning and zoning general business. Review and discuss and approve 2024 Laughlin Town Advisory Board meeting dates and take any action deemed appropriate. Get a motion to accept this. I've, I've looked at the dates and they're fine with me. Um, meeting dates. Okay, can I get a motion to accept them? So moved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Passes. Okay, a letter of support for the establishment of the Colorado River Heritage Greenway Park Trail Advisory Council and authorizing the advisory council to perform community service and outreach. I have read the letter. And I have read the letter. Um, have you read the letter? I have. Can I get a motion, please? So move that we accept the letter and submit it. Okay, any discussion? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Passes. No, I didn't. Okay, I need to read this into the, the record. It is November 14, 2023, Commissioner Michael Knapp, Clark County Board of County Commissioners, 500 South Grand Central Parkway, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89155. Three Laughlin Town Advisory Board Support Recommendation. At the November 14, 2023, Laughlin Town Advisory Board meeting, the board requested a letter be sent to the Board of County Commissioners in support to establish the Colorado River Heritage Greenway Park Trail Advisory Council. In 2012, the Colorado River Heritage Greenway Park and Trails opened in the public. It should be noted as one of two parks in Nevada, the park and trails are designated as part of the U.S. Great American Outdoor Initiative and Great American River Restoration established by President Obama. The park and trails are widely used by local citizens and visiting tourists. Annually since its opening, Clark County and the National Park Service has co-sponsored two public outreach events and activities, Wings and Wildlife and National Public Lands Day with great success. The two activities events have been supported by a citizens volunteer group, the Colorado River Heritage Greenway Park and Trails Partnership. The local citizens partnership was established by Clark County and the National Park Service 
under the National Park Service's Rivers, Trails, and Conservation Assistance Program. The Citizens Partnership has no formal legal structure to enter into a moratorium of understanding with Clark County, therefore it has been suggested an advisory council be established. The Laughlin Town Advisory Board has requested to provide their support and recommendations to establish such an advisory council to perform community service and outreach that includes the two annual events activities to Clark County Commissioner Michael Knapp. The establishment of the Colorado River Heritage Greenway Park Trail Advisory Council was discussed at the November 14, 2023 LTAB meeting. Please see the signatures of support below and then we will sign them. Any questions? Okay. This is a time for comments by the general public a period devoted to comments by the general public about matters relevant to the board's jurisdiction will be held. No vote may be taken on a matter not listed on the posted agenda. Comments will be limited to three minutes. Please step up to the speaker's podium. If applicable, clearly state your name and address and please spell your last name for the record. If any member of the board wishes to extend the length of a presentation. This will be done by the chairperson or the board by majority vote. Any comments? Next meeting will be December 12th, 2023, and I need a motion for it to adjournment. So moved. Hey, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. <laughs>